Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science, some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner. Uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. 
It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And, but it wasn't just learning about that, it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. What's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. We welcome you to the Schaefer Center, Fort Wayne, Indiana, for game two of our doubleheader between Cornerstone and Indiana Tech. On the docket next, men's basketball. The Warriors four and five overall, but three and one of the conference standings, taking on Cornerstone, who comes in at 500 on the year, four and four, but one and three in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Third time this season that Cornerstone's men's team will play on this floor. Our first two games of the year for Cornerstone came in this gymnasium in the WHAC and Crossroads League Tournament Classic to kick off the year. The challenge that started the season 
was a win for Cornerstone over Spring Arbor, 78 to 62. And then a loss to number nine, Indiana Wesleyan, 97 to 83. Since then, Cornerstone went on a three game win streak and currently on a three game losing streak. Three wins in a row, including over Kuiper College, IU at South Bend and Northwestern Ohio, but then three consecutive losses, one to Madonna, one to number 20 Lords, and then at Concordia in Ann Arbor, the last time out, 86 to 75, the final score in that game. Cornerstone uh, wasn't able to turn over the Cardinals. Concordia of Ann Arbor committed just six turnovers in the game, and Xavion McClendon had 30 points in the victory for Concordia. 21 of 24 at the free throw line though for Cornerstone is a good sign moving into this matchup today as the Golden Eagles are led in scoring so far this year by Luke Rowlinson. Rowlinson 20.4 points per game on 47% shooting from the floor and 37% from long range. Jack Joldersma leads the team in rebounds per game at 7.3 a contest. And then how about this from Eli Steffen? The junior guard, 6.2 assists per game on the season. He was the only player last year to have more than 100 assists on the team. He averaged 10.3 points a contest a season ago. He's up to 11 this year to go along with those six dimes per game. In terms of the field goal shooting percentage, Corey Ainsworth in the middle, six foot nine, grad center, 66% from the floor so far this season for Ainsworth. The Golden Eagles are coached by Kim Elders. 31st season for Coach Elders. He's got more than 750 wins in his career. A three-time D2 national champion here in the NAIA. Uh, divisions coming together over the course of the last three seasons. But before that, Cornerstone with three championships at the Division II level here in NAIA. 11-time regular season champion in the Wolverine Hoover at Hoosier Athletic Conference. The last regular season conference title coming back in the 2019 season for Cornerstone. Eric DeSantis joins Coach Elders on the bench in his 18th season as an assistant coach for the Golden Eagles, going up against a former coach of Cornerstone himself. Ted Albert in his seventh year at the helm here for Indiana Tech was a Cornerstone graduate back in 2011. They won the D2 National Championship in that 2011 season. And then Albert spent 10 years as an assistant at Cornerstone as well. Uh, they won that National Championship in the 2011 season. Javante Wilson and Kenton Aubrey join Coach Albert on the bench here this year as Indiana Tech comes in following an 80 to 76 loss to Cumberland here at home on Tuesday night. Tristan Cogner and Jaheim Berry each had 16 points in the win for Cumberland. Indiana Tech was really good at the free throw line in that game, 19 of 21, but they were minus four in the turnover margin, minus four in points off of turnovers, and those four points were the difference in a Cumberland victory, 80 to 76 over Tech here at the Schaefer Center. Tech is now 2-5 and five on their home floor this season, 2-0 and oh away from home, uh, losing that last time out. The Warriors will be at Siena Heights on December 16th, at Rio Grande on the 20th, and then off until the new year. For Cornerstone, they host Dearborn next Saturday, and then a travel to Winona Lake and Grace College. The number one Lancers will play host to the Cornerstone Golden Eagles on December 19th at Grace. So a big time matchup coming up between the Eagles and Grace uh, 10 days from now. This history and the series between these two teams favors Cornerstone, although Indiana Tech won the last time out 77 to 72 last season on January 25th. Prior to that though, and prior to really Coach Albert coming in to the frame here for Indiana Tech, Cornerstone dominated this series. 28 and 14 all time in this series, dating back to about the 2005 season. Tech 11 and nine on their home floor, but three and 19 at Cornerstone. And the Golden Eagles won 13 consecutive games in this series 
from 2013 to 2017. Should be a very interesting matchup between Cornerstone and Indiana Tech men's basketball and the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference as we check in. Excuse me, just been one of those days. I had the hiccups in the women's game and then that just went down the wrong pipe there. Let's check out our standings here in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference for men's basketball. And at the top of the table, currently, Lords and Madonna, both 4-0 in the conference season. Lords is still unbeaten with an 8-0 record. Rochester and Indiana Tech, both 3-1 in the WHAC. Aquinas comes in at 2-2 two two with Siena Heights. Concordia is 3-2 in the conference. Lawrence Tech at 2-3. and three. Cornerstone and UNOH are both 1-3. and three. And then Dearborn and Cleary at the bottom of the table, both 0-4 to start their conference season. Check in on some other games going on today as well. We'll try to keep you updated throughout the course of the broadcast here this afternoon of some other scores uh, in this area, and then of course in the WHAC as well. Some final scores already today. Indiana Wesleyan defeating IU East 98 to 83, the final score. That is the only game so far that has gone final on the men's basketball side of things. Dearborn is at Rochester today. Cleary at Northwestern Ohio. Siena Heights is at Madonna. Lawrence Tech at Concordia. And Lords is at Aquinas. So a full conference slate here on this Saturday afternoon in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference as we check out some of the final scores from women's basketball. Uh, Indiana Tech victorious over Cornerstone on the women's side of things. And a, a pretty wire-to-wire -wire victory for Tech against Cornerstone. 73-45 to the final score. Cleary got their first win of the season on the women's side, 69-65 to over Northwestern Ohio. Siena Heights defeating Madonna, 76-49. to Rochester over Dearborn, 81-55. Concordia defeating Lawrence Tech, 59-51. And then Aquinas with a two-point win over Lords, 74 to 72. Those are all finals from women's basketball in the one o'clock slate here in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. On the women's side of things, if you've been paying attention, you know that Georgetown's having a good year. They beat West Virginia Tech 96 to 56, a final score there. Clark out of Iowa, who's been at the top of the polls with a five-point win over Park in Missouri, 59 to 54. We talked about Indiana Wesleyan. They're currently taking on Campbellsville right now in a top five matchup, 49-44. Iwu leading Campbellsville on the road currently in the third quarter. So we'll keep our eyes on that matchup as we continue throughout the broadcast here today as well. We're gonna step aside, take about a four minute pause. We'll come back with starting lineups and get you set for tip off between Cornerstone and Indiana Tech. Men's basketball from Klein Court in the Schaefer Center tonight. Indiana Tech taking on Cornerstone after the Warriors on the women's side of things picked up the win. The men trying to respond and looking for a double header sweep against the Golden Eagles. Here today, we will also honor the runner-up team for the national tournament last year for Tech men's basketball at halftime. Don't go anywhere. We're back in four minutes with starting lineups from the Schaefer Center, SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students teaching the students the theory that they needed and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes, 
So my class sizes are the eight to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with, we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to some of the uh, devices that you'll be used, but I like to actually assign projects that are, you know, realistic projects. Those projects, this project-based learning, help students to work together in a group and be hands-on with their uh, the material or the uh, product that they're creating. Engineering students at Indiana Tech are, to me, stand out because I know that they've had a lot of experiences working in groups, working on projects, um, doing lab experiments to help them understand the material, and I think that prepares them well for industry. First thing I'll tell a high school student is study, study, study. Get all the math you can possibly get. Um, I honestly believe that the critical thinking skills you learn in math courses will help you with engineering courses. The type of knowledge base that students should have coming in, they need to be problem solvers and critical thinkers. Uh, those two things are really the essence of engineering. Regardless of flavor, they're going to need to figure out there's a problem here, how do I solve it? And they, they need to think critically about that. They need to observe, listen to people, and then kick in those problem-solving skills to, uh, to solve the problem. Part of the, the growth of Indiana Tech has involved uh, a, an increasing number of international students. So I think if we can expose students to different ideas, um, different cultures, again, it makes them that much more competitive in the marketplace. In uh, the Fort Wayne area, we have uh, lots of large companies, BAE Systems, Fort Wayne Metals, General Motors, Raytheon, um, Harris Corporation, and the list goes on. We have a lot of employers that want our engineering students. Indiana Tech, um, I think, continues to serve students even beyond their graduation. We really strive to keep in touch with our alumni on a personal level just to see how they're doing, but then also they want to give back to the university because of the experiences they've had here, um, so they want to provide opportunities for other students here as well. Game two of this doubleheader between Cornerstone and Indiana Tech is just around the corner. Let's turn it over to our public address announcer as we get set for the starting lineups. First for the Cornerstone, Golden Eagles. Four and four for Cornerstone this season, four and five for Indiana Tech, but reverse records in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Let's turn it over now to our public address announcer as we get set for starting lineups first for the Cornerstone Golden Eagles out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, led by 31st year head coach Kim Elders and Eric DeSantis on the bench in his 18th season as an assistant. Now, here's the starters for Cornerstone. Starting lineup. Here's a look at those starters for Cornerstone as they play the intro video for Indiana Tech. Let's look at the starters one more time for the Golden Eagles. Eli Steffen, the junior guard out of Zealand, Michigan. Junior forward out of Australia is number 22, Toby Woolcock. Corey Ainsworth, the grad senior and center from Michigan, wears number 30. 
Luke Rowlinson, a junior guard from Huron, Ohio, donning number 33, and then number 34, Mason Brooks, the junior forward from here in Indiana, out of Coatesville, makes his return to the Hoosier State to take on Indiana Tech this time. Like we mentioned, the start of the season, these two teams were here, but playing Indiana Wesleyan and Spring Arbor, respectively. And now for the third time this year, Cornerstone is in this building playing a big time game. One and one so far for Coach Elder's squad. Trying to go to two and one and pick up a, a conference win over Indiana Tech which has been hard to come by the past couple of seasons. Here are the starters for the Warriors. Warriors dealing with some injuries. No Nigel Martin, no Blake Davison here today for Indiana Tech. It's Titus Perez and Lewis who have been in the starting five pretty much all season long. Steve Helm has been in and out of the starting lineup. He gets the start tonight. And then Lucas Liskey getting a start here for Indiana Tech as well. Center court ready to go. Ainsworth and Lewis. The gray jerseys for Tech. Wins the opening tilt, and here we go. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference men's basketball play back underway here in Fort Wayne for the final time in 2023. Helm gets the handoff from Lewis as the shot clock trickles down towards 10. Lewis underneath on the reverse lay-in, and Tech's on the board first. Javel Lewis in for two. Cornerstone trying to find a groove offensively early on. Eli Steffen gets them started. Talked about his assist number six per game this year for Steffen. He's on the drive here and swatted away by Lewis. The national runner-ups from a season ago, Indiana Tech will honor last year's team at the halftime break. We'll show you that ceremony here on our YouTube channel. Brooks, corner pocket, too strong. Titus, the board, off the air ball. Perez up high, missed it. Just planked off the front side of the iron. Cornerstone averaging just under 85 points per game this season. Tech at 77 a contest. Wolcock on the right wing, we had a whistle and a foul underneath. And it's coming against Indiana Tech and it's on Javel Lewis, his first. Javel has been really good when he's been on the floor. Part of the issue for the redshirt junior has been staying out of foul trouble. Against Cumberland, six points, four rebounds, two blocks, but he had five personal fouls. Stefan floats it for Brooks, top of the key. Seven to shoot, Ainsworth facing up against Lewis. Out into the corner, Brooks catch and shoot. And again, missed that three ball, but an open look there for Cornerstone. 18-20 first half. Brady Titus, 10 points per game. Leads the team at the free throw line 88% this season. Up top for Perez. Bounced it back to Liskey, had to recollect here as their shot clock's down to seven. Perez scoops it around off the glass for two. Good finish with the right hand for Max Perez. Four to nothing, Indiana Tech in the first two minutes of the first half here at the Schaefer Center. 
Ainsworth, help comes on a double team, Liskey and Lewis out up high, Brooks shoots again, and this time cashes the three ball. One for three to start from downtown for Mason Brooks, but if Indiana Tech is going to allow him uh, to sit there and shoot all night, I think he'll do so. Titus, wide open, and good. Brady Titus with his first bucket, and Tech leads seven to three. Brooks bumped into, back out up high, Wolcock for Brooks, straight away again. This time he takes it down the left lane line. Good defense from Liskey. Titus wrapped around for Helm, and now up top, Lewis gives right to Perez. Javel Lewis, first real touch in the post since that first possession. Hook shot with the right hand over the top, and good for two. Timeout, cornerstone. Good start for Indiana Tech here on the home floor. 9-3, Warriors in front, 16-34. First half, we'll take a full time out with the media break. We're back to the Schaefer Center after this. SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good start for Indiana Tech. Warriors on top, 9-3 to three in the early stages of this one. Look at the action on this play. Perez cuts in and draws two defenders with him. That's what left Titus open from long range. And he cans that triple. Made it 7-3, to three, now 9-3, to three, Indiana Tech, 16-34, first half. Jaron Matheny for Summit City Sports. Isa Haynes is running our camera here today as well. Glad you are with us. First time out for Cornerstone. You get six in the men's game. Out up high, catch and shoot three. And there's another long-range look that goes. This time it's Luke Rollinson. So Rowlinson and Brooks each with a triple. Into Javel Lewis. Left hand this time, missed it off the glass and a foul on the floor against Cornerstone as Liskey was going hard after an offensive rebound. Brooks first personal foul as Steve Helm Looks to trigger the inbound. And either five seconds, no, an extension of the arm by Liskey, and he's caught for an offensive foul. So exactly four minutes off the clock here in the first half. And Tech leads by three. Eli Steffen to get the offense going for Cornerstone. Steffen catch and shoot. This three ball off the iron, goes over the top of the backboard, and that is ruled out of bounds, deemed out of bounds. It is Tech basketball. Starting five still out there for both sides, and that'll change quickly here as Cornerstone sends two guys to the scorer's table, Dykema and Bird. Crew Gibson to check in at the next pause for Tech. Perez, long range, good! Splash! Max Perez. 12 to six, Warriors. Ainsworth, 
Faces up, attacks, charge! We're headed the other way. Javel Lewis puts his body on the line and draws the foul against Ainsworth. Lewis earns a seat on the bench. Gibson on for the first time. As Dykema and Bird also in for Cornerstone. Memory serves me correct. Caden Bird had a pretty good game against Spring Arbor to start this season. Inside this gymnasium. Perez, another three. And he cashes it again. Flex the muscle. Max Perez from long range. Three balls flying early for Indiana Tech. Bird can't respond. Perez rebound, pushing up the floor. Titus slings it back and turned it over. Rollinson, one on two, drives, missed the lay-in, and Gibson's there to clear the rebound. 14-25, first half. Gibson driving against Bird, help comes defensively. Perez deep again. Ooh, just off the iron. Travel as Brooks got started too quickly going downhill. Connor West, Dallas Roberts coming on for Indiana Tech. And we're going to take an immediate timeout. We already took it. Uh, we'll take another anyway. 15 to 6, Indiana Tech leading cornerstone. We're back after this. SummitCitySports.com. Tech goes by many names. Business. Fine art. Forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships. Internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one on one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Deep ball playing dividends for Indiana Tech in the early going. 15 to six, Warriors leading Cornerstone. And so far, Tech three for five from long range. Max Perez with eight points, Javel Lewis with four, and Brady Titus has the other three. 14.08 first half, and we took a media timeout on the first timeout for Cornerstone, which was a 30. We took the full media break, and we just took another, so we could have one more remaining in this half, or we could play the final 14 minutes without a, a real media pause, just be at the official's discretion now. Helm on the baseline, double team help comes, gotta get it through somewhere, sneaks it out for a Roberts three, and that's off, but an off, a push off underneath. And we've got dueling fouls potentially. Looks like we got a foul. Yeah, double foul. Stefan and Helm. And a foul actually called against Liskey. So Stefan's first personal, but Liskey's second, and that'll bring Steel Brassfield in. For Indiana Tech, Liskey have to hit the bench with 13.46 left in the first half. Grace Nybor is at the scorer's table for Cornerstone at the next pause. Possession arrow flips back to Indiana Tech now because of the double foul. They go to a jump ball. Dykema on a handoff. 
Stefan against West. Pulls up, too strong, loose ball. Dykema rebound, put it back up. And what? One and one free throw coming for Connor Dykema. Wolcock and Nybor enter. And one free throw for Dykema. Thirty-three percent at the line this season for Dykema, and no struggles continue on that free throw. Tech in front by seven. Helm nearly lost it. Gibson straight on and good. Fourth three of the first half already for Indiana Tech as Crew Gibson cans it. Largest lead for the Warriors at 10 points. Wolcock back out up top. Nybor nowhere to go, has to give off right. Rowlinson. Offensive foul as Dykema was trying to clear out Gibson. And Coach Elder's just his arms crossed right now. Dykema's first, that's the fourth team foul on Cornerstone. Roberts, Titus, Gibson, Brassfield, and West, the five on the floor. This is a bit of an unusual group for what Tech has done this season, but with Martin out, Davison out, to press a couple different buttons. Titus, double screens, good help from Nybor. It's Roberts off Brassfield, catch and shoot, and good! Steal Brassfield, largest lead for Tech. Brassfield averaged just under 20 points per game during his senior year of high school. He can fill it up if given the opportunity. Nybor from deep, can't respond. Loose ball, jump ball, and it's Indiana Tech basketball. Javelle Lewis in for the Warriors. And Gibson will come out. Ainsworth back on. And Cornerstone for the first time we see Blake Stewart out there. See if they go into Lewis quickly here. Uh, there it is, Javelle Lewis, right elbow. A handoff to Titus. Lewis back for West, throws it up to Lewis. Trapped on the baseline there and nearly turned it over. Stewart couldn't hang on. Nine to shoot. And credit to the Indiana Tech bench right now. Got a lot of leadership on that bench with Helm and Perez. First thing they do, signaling to their guys on the floor how much time they've got to shoot. Brassfield, fade away, no good. Ainsworth has been quiet so far. Back for Nybor, he cuts into the lane. May have taken an extra step, didn't matter. Titus surveys. And a handoff for West. Three ball. Connor West unable to connect. 11 minutes, first half, 21 to eight. Indiana Tech leading Cornerstone. Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference men's basketball and a doubleheader today. The Schaefer Center, last doubleheader of the year for basketball. We'll restart in January. Nybor again off the mark. Titus scanning the floor, goes downhill. Beautiful lay in. Kept it away from the outstretched arm of Wolcock. Titus lays it home, 15 point lead. Inside the free throw line, Rowlinson gets to his spot and connects. Checking on Connor Dykema right now. May have gotten hit up high. As Titus launches, 
No friendly bounce this time. Midway through the first half. Rowlinson off left, Stewart. Back out up top. Shot clock midway through. Rowlinson, little runner, no. Ainsworth rebound, put back, doesn't fall. He got another and then blocked by Lewis. Javel Lewis, not in my house. Timeout for Indiana Tech. 9.36, first half. Shooting from long range has been pertinent for the Warriors. This is Steel Brassfield from long range. And the Warriors lead at 23 to 10. We'll step aside, come back with more basketball after the break. SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. We have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half, Indiana Tech leading Cornerstone and Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference basketball from the Schaefer Center this afternoon. 13 point advantage for the Warriors. Eight points for Max Perez leads the scoring. Luke Rowlinson on the other side with five points to lead Cornerstone. Here's Perez, filters out for a Roberts triple and that was offline. Lewis though saves it back to Titus. Extra effort, Brassfield, no good. And Stewart crashing for that rebound. Rollinson and a reach in by Brasfield. Not the end of the world there as he got beat towards the cup. Well, five timeouts remain for both Cornerstone and Indiana Tech. Coach Albert sensing a little bit his side. Legs not quite up to what they wanted there after really five minutes of continuous action. Deep inbound, Woolcock underneath it. Looking in. And the goal back out for Stefan. Woolcock, long range. And that three ball's not dropping for Cornerstone. Foul on the inside and it's Lewis Going up against Ainsworth, and Javel Lewis just picked up his second. Fifth, rather sixth team foul against the Warriors. Liskey with two personals is back in now for Indiana Tech, and it's, it's gonna become mix and match, and Crew Gibson's gonna have to step up in a big way potentially here today. Ainsworth. Good for two. And for Cornerstone, when Lewis gets out of the game and Ainsworth is still in, you gotta figure it'll be a heavy dose of number 30. Perez, again to the rack. He's got 10 points. Action starts. And here is Ainsworth. Trying to set a screen, frees up Rollinson for just a moment. Offensive foul and a moving screen on Ainsworth. Ball, 
Dykema is on for Cornerstone. That was the second on Ainsworth. So the two big guys, Lewis and Ainsworth, each with two personal fouls in this first half before the eight minute mark. Helm, Titus, Perez, Liskey, and Gibson, the five for Indiana Tech. Titus, free throw line jumper. Offense looks good for Indiana Tech in this first half, shooting 55% from the floor compared to 25% on the other side, and now a foul underneath. And we may have an injured player as well. It's a blocking foul on Brady Titus. And back up onto his feet now. Stefan just trying to walk it off. Stefan's going to stay in the game. At least it appears. Seven forty-two, first half, twenty-seven to twelve. Indiana Tech leading Cornerstone, and then Stefan is staying in. Two free throws. Or rather, one and one. Missed the front end, and Liskey rips down the board. Perez off the handoff, rims out. I mean, a chance for Indiana Tech right now to put the foot on the gas in a big way to end this half. Brooks back, Woolcock straight away. Cannot buy a three-point bucket right now for Cornerstone as a whole. Fifteen point game. Liskey got his defender in the air and finishes. Wolcock kicks out. Head fake. Spin down Dykema. Brooks open up high. Still unable to hit from three. Titus. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Brady Titus. Shifty. Dykema. Again, cornerstone looking for a response. Travel. Yep. Golden Eagles. Really struggling on the offensive side right now. Cornerstone looking for a timeout. It's granted. All Warriors right now. Indiana Tech up by 19. 619 to play. First half. We're back in 30 seconds. SummitCitySports.com. One to 12, Indiana Tech on top of Cornerstone. It's men's basketball from the Schaefer Center, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Cornerstone off that timeout. Looking for some answers on, on really both sides of the floor. Titus driving in, wraps around, off for Helm, corner three. There's another 22 point lead for Indiana Tech.
and an offensive foul on Cornerstone. It's all Warriors right now. Here's the last possession offensively. Helm in the corner, good. And then how about before that, Brady Titus, shifty. Titus has nine, Perez with 10. Helm's first field goal was that three. Titus, and verticality there for Dykema. It's a handoff for Wolcock. Bird gives off right, Dykema. Dribbles in against Gibson. Try to get it back on the pass through. It's taken away. Brassfield, Gibson numbers as Titus lays it in. Run the floor beautifully there for Indiana Tech. Best the Warriors have looked all season long. Five minutes left, first half. Rowlinson, nowhere to go. Brooks spinning. May have been gifted an extra step there. Won't matter as he fouls Brassfield. And the Tech fans love it. As they should. Yeah, you know, one and one on the other side. Brassfield headed to the charity strike. This looks like a different Tech team right now. Certainly the defensive stops come into play when you're increasing the lead like the Warriors have done, but it's the offensive side and never stopping. You know, this it's just been motion, 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 and, and guys getting downhill and, and beating defenders to spots. You know, Brady Titus finding his spot on the floor. Rasfield gets the first of the one and one. Perez, you know, even Steve Helm in that corner three, finding where your best shot is at and making the most of the opportunity. Warriors shooting 58% from the floor. Brassfield hits both free throws. Well, those are the first two free throws of this half for Indiana Tech. Wolcock in the corner, gets it back. Midway through the shot clock. Rowlinson, Helm tried to jar it free. Good physical defense. Oh, up high, yeah, offensive foul on Rowlinson. Elbow to the face of Steve Helm, and he is fired up. It is all Warriors. And the officials discussing potential intentional foul here, maybe. One and one on the other side for Steve Helm. It's the first on Rowlinson. That's two free throws for Helm. Helm goes two for two. 28 point lead in the first half for Indiana Tech. Cornerstone 22% from the field, two of 11 from long range, 12 total points. 58% from the floor, 43% from deep for Indiana Tech. It is a different Tech basketball team right now, and they're doing it with two starters injured. Titus, another, he is unreal. 30 point lead. Going up on the inside, came up short. Rowlinson chasing after it. 
Not an extra opportunity on the offensive glass. Nybor stripped free by Perez. Loose ball and a foul on Helm going after that loose change. Helm second, it's Nybor at the free throw line for one and one. Connor Weston, Dallas Roberts in for Indiana Tech. Front end is good. Cornerstone, one of three at the line in the first half. And two for two for Nybor. 3.45 first half. The first almost 17 minutes have been entirely controlled by Indiana Tech. Titus out, Gibson wide open. No good. That action got him wide open, though, on the pick and roll. Nybor, good angle, finds the lay-in for two. It's Cornerstone looking up at the scoreboard right now saying, we got to get back to 20 before half. It's been as many as 30. Gibson just attacks, got blocked as Vanderwerf slid over and then traveled with the basketball. West, Roberts, Brassfield, Gibson, and Titus. Five on the floor. Roberts out, Gibson gonna launch again. Second made three of the afternoon for Crew Gibson. Roberts the assist. Nybor took the shot, couldn't hit, Gibson rebound. And Titus not wasting any time. Look at him, so shifty in space, getting up the floor. Brassfield. Out, Roberts catch and shoot. It's good! It's all Warriors in the first half. Look at it, half a century in this first half of action for the Warriors. Nybor pulls up, bank not open. Final two minutes of the first half. Titus, shifty again. Hand off, Brassfield head fake, slings it inside, just too hot to handle. Looking at Roberts. Whew. They're all over the place. Is Indiana Tech. Energy in this building has been better than it has been really all year. Outside that Indiana Wesleyan home opener in St. Francis, of course, hasn't been rocking in this gymnasium like it should be. Gibson nearly got the jump ball. Loose ball underneath, West has it. Minute 25 first half. Roberts, no dice this time. And a reach in foul as Stefan pushed it up the floor. The clock stops at 1.13 in the first half, one and one free throws. And a ninth team foul. One and one, Eli Steffen. And gets the first to go. It's 
Stefan one for two on this trip. Titus shaking and baking again, missed it this time. <laughs> he just, you get the ball in his hands and you never know what he's gonna do. Stefan dumped it back and a foul underneath against the Warriors. 47 and a half seconds left first half. It's been all tech in the opening 20 minutes of action. Free throws. for Vanderwerf. Too strong on the first free throw attempt. Foods in the building for the Tech women's team. Just all walk past us up here. One for two on that trip. Potential two for one here for Indiana Tech, although <laughs> you may as well run the 30 seconds at this point. Two for one, wiped off. Titus, gone to a zone defense here for Cornerstone. Gibson gets in the middle, throws it to the corner. Bounce pass for Roberts. Out, Titus pulls up, free throw line, short. Good rebound underneath, Brassfield hits the deck. Other side, three ball, too strong from Boyke. Shot clock turned off, throw it up for Gibson. The lay-in's good. Turnover, Roberts three, no. And that is how the first half comes to a close. And what a first half it was for Indiana Tech. Dominant on both ends of the floor. Halftime here at the Schaefer Center. 50 to 18, Warriors on top of Cornerstone will come back and honor last year's runner up to the national tournament after this. SummitCitySports.com Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors.
We welcome you back here at the halftime break. Indiana Tech leading Cornerstone 50 to 18. Let's welcome back the runner-ups from last year's national tournament. The Indiana Tech 2022-23 men's basketball team. Awesome to get to honor these guys and all the accomplishments from last year. And Raj, if you're watching, we wish you could be here with us, but keep grinding away and uh, we'll see you back here in Fort Wayne eventually. 50 to 18 at the halftime break, Cornerstone trailing Indiana Tech as we honor the runner-ups from last year in the national tournament. 
2022-23 Tech men's basketball team, the best there ever was here in the history of Tech basketball. We'll come back with second half action after this. SummitCitySports.com. Hi, I'm Paxton and I'll be your tour guide today. Behind me we have Pearson Hall. This is one of our freshman dorms on campus. Today I'll be showing you dorm rooms. Come inside. And the only way to get into campus is if you have an ID card, so you'll have to like swipe into all the dorms. And then over here we have an intercom system. So through every dorm we have these like dial buttons within the dorm rooms and then outside. So say you're visiting somebody, you don't live here, you would dial their room number and then you can actually call their room and they can unlock the doors to the dorm through the intercom system and you can talk to them, they can see you through a camera and they can unlock the doors for you so they don't have to leave the room. It's really nice to have. So right here we just have our main lobby. Um, every floor has a lobby. In, in the lobbies we just have like TVs and stuff. You can watch movies, play video games. You can hang out with friends, do homework, play card games. Um, it's just a nice little hangout area to have. Um, and then right here, this is what we call our RA office. So every single night there will be an RA in the office. They're just there for your needs if you have any issues with like toilets or sinks or anything being clogged. They'll always be in there for your help. Um, if you have questions about anything, you can always come see an RA here. Um, and then over here, we have mailboxes. Every student has a mailbox. They are really small. The only thing they can fit is like card-sized items. Throughout campus, you'll see our mail room when you go on your actual tour later on and that will be in one of our other buildings where you'll receive bigger packages. All right, so here's the laundry room. So in the laundry room, you don't have to save quarters or use quarters. I know it says 25 cents, but it is included with living on campus. And then there's one on every floor and every side of floor. So there's two on every floor in Pearson. So every student has keys to their dorm. And then as you come in, um, you will see our intercom system right here that I talked about in the entranceway. So this is where you would like unlock the door for visitors, talk to them. Um, and then one really nice thing about it is there is a security guard button right there. So if you were to have somebody like calling your room constantly at like 5 o'clock in the morning because some student forgot their keys, you could actually press the security guard button and it will lock them in that little box that we entered to into the dorm. It'll lock both the outside doors and the inside doors and call security. So it also has a nice safety measure through within your room. You don't even have to leave your room for that. So it's really nice. And then as we enter in this way, you'll see our, this is the half of our room looks like. So there's this, and then on the other side of the suite, there's a mirrored room that looks exactly like this. Um, the desk, the dressers, and the closets, and all of the drawers and stuff all come with. Um, you can decorate it any way you'd like, and then like mini fridges, TVs, anything like that you would bring here. And then through here we have our bathroom. So then as we come into the bathroom, you'll see that this side of the room has their own sink and toilet, and then as you come through, there's one shower shared between the two rooms, and then this side of the room has their own sink and toilet, and then there's the mirrored room right here. So then they share a little common space out there, and then this is the exact same stuff, and it's all the same. Here we have Cal Flush. This is our other freshman dorm on campus. It is across the street from main campus. We'll be showing another freshman dorm, the laundry room, and then the hangout lobby area. Come on in. So same thing as Pearson, um, to get into the dorms you have to have a swipe card that unlocks and lets you in. Alright, and then we have the same intercom system as we do in Pearson and it runs throughout all of the dorms. And then in here is the lobby area where all the students hang out. We have like a TV so people can hook up like Xboxes or anything like that, DVD players, you can watch movies. I know RAs put on a bunch of activities down here, they do like movie nights. Um, with hot chocolate during the winter. We done, we've done like pumpkin carving and we watch a Halloween movie. Um, and so that's all done down here. And then it's the same thing over here. You can do some studying, you can hang out with friends, you can eat dinner if you want. And then, like I said, you can hang out with your RA, hang out with your friends, do homework, but follow me to the next part. So same thing as Pearson, every student has keys to their dorm. 
So when you first walk in, it's different than Pearson where there's no like two mirrored room. It's just one room with two students. The shelves, the desk, the drawers, all of the bed, like the beds and stuff all come with. Um, and then over here, it's the same for Pearson and Calb Flesh. You can control the air condition and the heat for the room, not the entire dorm, which is so nice because then it's between you and your roommate, not through hundreds of people in one building. <laughs> and then as we walk over here, you'll see that the sink is outside of the bathroom, which is so nice because obviously if your roommate's showering, you don't have to worry about not being able to brush your teeth or even use the sink or get a drink of water or anything like that. And then as we walk over here, um, you'll see only two roommates to one bathroom. And then the shelving space. And then instead of Pearson where they have uh, closets, you would have this whole shelving space and hangar area. And then same thing as Pearson, we have the intercom system over here where you can press the security guard button, you can talk to them, and then see them through the camera. Cowflesh also has mailboxes, they're the same size, they fit card sized items. And again, if you have any bigger packages, we do have a mail room on campus. So then through here, this is the laundry room. The difference between Pearson and Cowflesh is Cowflesh is only one in the whole building and it's on the first floor, whereas Pearson has them on every floor. Um, but it is the same as they are included with living here, so you don't have to use quarters. It's free to the students. And that concludes the tour. Thanks for coming with. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to your counselor. Hope to see you around campus. Go Warriors! Getting ready for second half action. Indiana Tech on top, 50 to 18 over Cornerstone at the halftime break from the Schaefer Center here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Some halftime scores in other Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference games. Madonna leading Siena Heights 31 to 17 at the break. Northwestern Ohio over Cleary 36 to 28 at the half. Rochester 42-29 against Michigan Dearborn. That's a halftime score. And just starting the second half, Lawrence Tech leading Concordia 35-31. Lords and Aquinas are tied up at 41. That is a halftime score. The half Cornerstone. Cornerstone basketball to start the second 20 minutes of play. It was all Indiana Tech in that first half see if there's a response here early on from cornerstone you don't figure this is a group that's just going to sit down rollinson too strong lewis off his hands out of bounds it's tech basketball and just 16 seconds into the second half indiana tech gets a stop on defense lewis liskey perez titus and helm make up the five for indiana tech Perez back to Titus. Helm, a little head fake. Throwing it towards Lewis and just not on the same page for that opportunity. 50 first half points for the Warriors and allowing just 18. This is the largest margin uh, of lead at the half for Indiana Tech on the home floor this season. Rollinson from deep, got it. And Cornerstone's going to need a lot of that to overcome what's now a 29-point lead. Titus and Perez both in double figures at the half for Indiana Tech, who shot near 60% from the floor in that first half. Turnover. Brooks with a takeaway. This is Eli step into the right. Wilcock enters Ainsworth. Stefan around the screen from Ainsworth. Little stop, may have been a double dribble, uh, but kept that ball up high enough to top hand back down and good for two. 5-0 run for Cornerstone to start the second half. Those are the things you gotta have if you're the Golden Eagles. Helm in the middle of the zone, hands off to Perez. Back to Helm. Now Titus, head fake, passes for Liskey. He attacks Ainsworth, kick out, corner three. Perez, good ball movement, but unable to capitalize from beyond the arc. Brooks in transit, catch and shoot three is good. And the first eight points of the second half belong to Cornerstone. 24-point lead for Indiana Tech. 
Perez up for Lewis, couldn't finish with a jam. Brooks in transit, just looking to catch fire there. Other side, Liskey. Musters it up, no good. Put back goes. Coach Albert yelling talk defensively. The communication's got to be better. Wolcock, runner, no good. Helm, handoff, Liskey hangs and finishes for two more. So after an 8 0 start for the second half for Cornerstone, Tech has scored the last four, both off the right hand of Liskey. Brooks, they leave him open, top of the key. And Lewis crashes in against Rowlinson for that rebound. And is it a treat to have Javel Lewis on the floor? Titus turns, unable to hit, and that one just got away from Lewis on the offensive glass. Running the floor, Titus like a cornerback, swats it away. Stefan back, Ainsworth jumper, rimmed out. 16-20, second half, 54-26. Loose ball underneath, a little bit sloppy from both these teams to start. The second half as Wolcock lays it in on the other side. Certainly if Indiana Tech can put up 50 points and a half, Cornerstone can do the same, but it's more for the Golden Eagles about slowing down this Tech offense first and foremost. Titus for Perez. Continue to move around against this zone. Titus attacks in the middle, ball trickles to Lewis. And then he's fouled on the way up. Rowlinson on the reach in, not the block from Ainsworth. Two free throws for Javel Lewis. Coach Elder is asking, what did he do wrong? Shooting two. Lewis drops in the first free throw. And Javel this season, 39% at the charity stripe, so a place to improve. Keep a close eye on that Lords and Aquinas score, which could really impact how the conference shakes out this early in the year. It's Every game still important. Cornerstone knows that as they sit at the nine spot currently. Indiana Tech at number four. There's a whistle and a foul against Javel Lewis. That is his third. Brassfield, the scores table. They're closing in on media timeout as well. Brooks, open, long range, spins out. It was halfway down, and then a foul on Helm on the box out. We'll keep it with Cornerstone. Roberts and Brassfield both in. Helm and Lewis out. Deep look, Rowlinson short, and he was shooting from about 30 feet. Cornerstone, 2-3 zone. Grassfield turns, 15-foot jumper. Not soft enough on the rim. Approaching our first media timeout of the next whistle. Wolcock, it's left. Rowlinson nearly traveled. Ainsworth jumper, that goes. Just haven't really gotten him going in this game, and Ainsworth normally shoots 66% from the field. And a cornerstone at 27% as a unit right now after that first half. They just, I mean, they were scoreless for minutes on end. Gibson recollects. 
Roberts off, Gibson attacking Ainsworth and gets the contact. Drew Gibson with two free throws coming up after the break. Warriors still in control, 56 to 30. Indiana Tech leading Cornerstone. We're back with free throws for Crew Gibson after this. SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. Offense hasn't been quite as easy to come by for Indiana Tech to start this second half, but 50 first half points for the Warriors. Yeah, Tech leading by 26, and two free throws coming for Crew Gibson as well. Titus, Roberts, Perez, Brassfield, and Gibson are the five on the floor for Indiana Tech. It's Dykema out there with Sa with Wilcock, excuse me. Baird. Gibson missed the free throw. Let's try that again. Dykema, Bird, Wilcock with Rowlinson and then Steppen as Gibson goes one for two. 14-10, second half, and it's all Indiana Tech. It's been all Tech this entire game. Nine to three early on, and it, it, it just continued to pull away after that. Cornerstone took a quick timeout, and there's a foul on the inside against the Warriors. Cornerstone took a 30-second timeout when it was nine to three, and the lead just continued to grow, and as this offense Got set. He really figured some things out. Coach Elders, a little bit of a warning from this officiating crew as he continues to chirp. Hold on Perez. It's the fourth team foul against Indiana Tech. Things could get chippy here in a hurry. Be a little bit different than our last game at the tail end. Wolcock, short on that three. Titus picks it up and running away with it the other side. Off for Roberts, reverse lay-in, and that is goaltending. So the bucket counts, 59 to 30. Tech in front, 13-39 second half. Stefan is in. Blake Stewart returns to the lineup. Wolcock getting a rest. Dykema out towards the top. Left wing. Now Dykema gets it back straight away. Going to let him go. He takes it too strong. Brassfield rebound. Titus scans the floor. Roberts open. Three. Rolled off. Rollinson ahead. Stefan hangs through it. It was knocked out of bounds by the Warriors, but I mean, forcing him to give up the ball there was Titus as he got in the lane and looked to take a charge. Seven minutes off the clock in the second half. Stewart jumper goes as Cornerstone not going to give up but in this game you've got to you got to make a 15-0 type of run if the Golden Eagles are going to be able to even get back in the in the reach of this one and 
West, Titus, Roberts, Brassfield, and Gibson, the five. Midway through the shot clock. Gibson just gonna pull off the heel. As Roberts nearly forced to take away. Stefan runs and lays it in in transit. Twenty-five points separating these two sides. 12-15, second half. Rasfield wrapped it back to Titus. Dribbles, baseline out. Roberts gonna hoist. This time he connects. Under 12 to play. Rallinson fouled on the way up. Foul is on West, his first. Rowlinson hits the first. Checking in for Cornerstone. Host of subs in for Cornerstone. Nybor returns, Woolcock returns, as does Ainsworth. 2 for 2 for Rowlinson at the line. Helm, Gibson, West, Brassfield, and Roberts. Gibson kicking out, Roberts again, corner three, and rolled off the iron. Jumper, Ainsworth, good. A little bit at a time here for Cornerstone, got a couple it with stops on the other end. As we approach the 11 minute mark. Roberts slings it west, extra pass for Helm, who drives in, floats it up off the right side of the iron and out. Stored up the floor, pass knocked out of bounds as Tech got back defensively. Javel Lewis coming in for Gibson. Number two, Javel Lewis returns to the Warrior lineup. 11.03, second half. Backdoor cut. Rowlinson finishing against Lewis, despite some contact up top. Helm into the middle of the zone, bounced off Lewis, and he got hammered going up to try and dunk it. Javel Lewis, two free throws upcoming. Ainsworth just picked up his fourth. Mason Brooks to the scorer's table, and more than likely he's coming in for Ainsworth. Lewis hits the free throw, and that is the case. Free throw number two is good for Lewis. The advantage at 24 points for Indiana Tech. Offense has been better for Cornerstone here in the second half, as has the defense, but just a, a huge deficit to try and overcome. That's a foul against the Warriors, and that is the sixth team foul already against Indiana Tech. Brassfield's third as Liskey is on for Brassfield. Number 11, Lucas Liskey checks back into the Warrior lineup. Rollinson, travel, oh no. Helm wrapped his hands around Mason Brooks and that's the fourth on Helm, so now one and one for Mason Brooks. Helm, four fouls. Ainsworth's got four on the other side. Lewis has three for Tech. First of the one and one is good for Mason Brooks. Junior forward, 
out of Coatesville, Indiana. He's played pretty well on this floor this year. Third game now. Two for two. Nearing the midway point of the second half. It was 50 to 18 at the break. Much closer now on the scoreboard. Roberts bounced in, Lewis. That big body inside finishes with a right hand. It is tough to slow him down when you don't have any height to match with Ainsworth out right now. And Tech could just keep giving it to Lewis. Nybor, deep ball. Coach Albert's okay with that one. He knows he's gonna give up a little bit on the long range looks with both Liskey and Lewis in with the lineup they're facing on the other side. But this is where it should be pretty dominant for Tech. Turned over, two on one, Wolcott. Blocked by Liskey, and then saved by West. Roberts to the rim, and that'll get the crowd right back into it. Whistle, and it's gonna be bonus time for Cornerstone. After the pause, 9-17, second half, 68-45, Indiana Tech in front of Cornerstone. Final 9-17 after this, SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good luck, Tammy. See you, David. Things happen. How do you make the unexpected happen? Take the next step with an online degree from Indiana Tech. Start with a visit to one of our two new Chicago area enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. You'll discover a wide range of affordable undergraduate and graduate degrees with flexible class schedules designed to fit your lifestyle and help you earn a degree sooner than you'd expect. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. 9-17, second half, 68-45, Indiana Tech leads Cornerstone. Warriors trying to move to 4-1 in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. As Cornerstone tries to get to 2-3 in the conference standings. Rawlinson at the line with one and one free throws. Other scores, Madonna leading Siena Heights now 60 to 35 as that free throw is off, out of bounds, belongs to Tech. Northwestern Ohio leading Cleary at home, 42 to 36. Lawrence Tech now on top of Concordia, 61 to 53, and it's Lords in front of Aquinas by two. Still 14 minutes to go at Aquinas. Roberts up for Liskey, too hot. Titus back in for Indiana Tech. Stefan, deep look, rims off. And again, just the long range opportunities have been there for Cornerstone. They just haven't capitalized enough in the shooting department. 23% from deep, 32% from the floor. They were 21% in the first half. Liskey missed it, loose balls out and belongs to Cornerstone. Golden Eagles host Dearborn on the 16th and then they travel to number one Grace on December 19th. Tech is on a little bit of a longer break after two games before Christmas. Titus out. Perez on the head fake, looking for his first bucket of the second half. Too strong, Roberts offensive rebound. 
When you play zone, it can be hard to find a man and box out. Perez off, Liskey lays it in. Lucas Liskey's got eight points. Titus with 13, Lewis and Perez and Roberts all have 10. Four in double figures for Indiana Tech. Pass out, Woolcock with a quick bounce pass, gets it back, he launches, cannot hit. Offensive rebound though, and Stewart fouled then, and it's Lewis's fourth. So now Lewis and Helm both with four personal fouls. Ainsworth also has four. He's going to come back in as Gibson returns for the Warriors. And Gibson, 16 minutes play, nine points. He's on the verge of double digits. So is Liskey now. I mean, this is, you got a chance to have five guys in double figures here for Indiana Tech. But the way they've played, certainly deserving of that. Gibson out, Titus, and he leads the scoring on both sides of the aisle. Roberts down low, Gibson into double figures. Fourth guy to reach double digits for Indiana Tech. Ainsworth runs into Liskey and we get a blocking foul. I mean, you can hear from the crowd how. It's the 10th team foul on Indiana Tech. Ainsworth shooting two. Rollinson back in. Ainsworth hits the pair. Full court pressure from Cornerstone. Warriors break it. Closing in on seven minutes to play. It's been all tech here tonight on the home floor. They've responded to whatever Coach Albert said this week without two starters. This group has stepped up. They played for each other today. Perez, wrap around on the lay-in attempt and he's fouled by Woolcock. That is the fifth. Cornerstone foul on 22, Toby we'll Make it the fourth team foul on Cornerstone. At the line your Warriors, five, Max Perez, shooting two. Perez knocks in the first. And then four in double figures for Indiana Tech. Liskey is knocking on the door with eight. And Brassfield gets back in. He's got a chance potentially to get that mark. He's at five. Helm also with five. 74-47. Indiana Tech 11 of 12 at the free throw line. Deep shot from Brooks is pure. Mason Brooks. He has 11 and three of 11 shooting. Titus stopping in the paint, out up for Roberts. Free throw line, little fade, no, Gibson. Second attempt at the putback is good. He's just out working. Cornerstone underneath. Ainsworth head fake. Backing in against Liskey. Gibson helps on the double team, but Ainsworth finishes anyway. Pace is picking up again in this one as we approach six to go. Wise from Indiana Tech. No need to push the possessions in this game right now with the lead you've got. Roberts wide open, got a pull. No, Liskey held as he tapped it out. That's the fifth team foul against Cornerstone. the third on Brooks. Yeah. 
Fresh 20 on the shot clock. Perez backing it out, and now Titus resetting with 10 to work. Titus gets to that spot to pull up, a little bit extended from where he likes it. No foul underneath going after that rebound was Gibson. Brooks out, three ball, no. And that's got to be over the top, yeah. Wolcock over the back of Perez on the box out. Team foul number six on Cornerstone. Bird enters. Cornerstone ball on 22. Toby Wolcock, his second. 76-52. Closing in on the final five minutes as Indiana Tech just one of those seasons you're going to have to be able to grind out every win, especially dealing with the injuries they're dealing with. You would have expected their top two scorers. Perez, jump shot's good. You would have expected their top two scorers to be Martin and Davison. Those are the two guys out. Nybor missed the lay-in. Gibson, the rebound, pushing up the floor. Crew Gibson is going to take it to the rack himself and draws the foul. Five rebounds, 13 points, two assists for Crew Gibson in 19 minutes played. Eli Stephan, his third. Five in double figures for Indiana Tech. And Gibson's first free throw is good. Brassfield and West back in. Perez, 14 points, leads all scores. 13 for Titus, 14 for Gibson as he goes one of two at the line. So Gibson and Perez both leading this game in terms of scoring, offensive foul, Dykema on that screen. That's the seventh team foul, but an offensive foul and a player control foul, so no free throws on the other side. Seeing some smiles for Indiana Tech as well. I mean, this is this is one of those days at the office you can look back on if things get rough mid-January, early February, you can look back to this one and say, hey, we have this in us. The ability to score 50 points in the first half. Levi Schultz is in for the first time for Cornerstone, as is Andy Mora. Mora the basketball, off right for Dykema. Aiden Gortmaker gonna check in as well at the next break. Dykema, Gibson staying straight up, ball was jarred free. Bird on the inside, <laughs> and a foul call. I'd be quite frank, I'm not sure I saw a foul there. Titus called for his second. Bird misses the first of two. Substitutions coming in. Eric Hobson and Evan Haroldson on for the first time. Vanderwerf also back in for Cornerstone. So it's second units on the floor, just over four minutes to go. Bird in the corner. No, Gibson rebound. Hobson is 32. This is Brassfield! Oh, baby! Steal Brassfield! Couldn't poke it free. Jump shot, no. Into the corner, collected. So it's saying Hobson 32, Haroldson 33, the new guys in for Indiana Tech. And now a foul on Gibson. I think we're just a little whistle happy right now for this point in the game. Vanderwerf, 
Hits the first. Number 11, Aiden Gortmaker checks in for Cornerstone. 81-54. West for Brassfield, out in the corner. A look for Hobson. Can't quite pick up his first collegiate bucket, although good opportunity there. Final three minutes of this game. Mora. And a foul on West. That's the third on West. Two free throws for Mora. It's well within the double bonus for Cornerstone. Eagles have dropped a four and five on the year. One and four in the conference. Tech going to four and one in the conference with a win here today. Five and four overall. Mora one and two. And like I mentioned for Indiana Tech, it's on the road the next two times out. And then they'll be back home after Christmas break in the new year. Brassfield, jumper, long. Rebound, though, for Hobson. Nine to work. Gibson throwing it up towards Hobson and a turnover. It's at Siena Heights on the 16th and then at Rio Grande, the 20th for Indiana Tech. And then off until January 3rd. Out up high, three ball. That's off the iron on the attempt from Seidel. Out of bounds, and it's Tech basketball. Forty-eight percent from the field, thirty-six percent from long range. Twelve of fourteen at the free throw line for Indiana Tech. 14 for Gibson and Perez as that three ball doesn't drop for Haroldson. 13 for Titus and then 10, Lewis as well as Roberts. Mora good from deep. Minute 40 remains. Haroldson, deep look, there it is! And the bench loves it as the freshman connects. Mora attacks, had to give off right. Mora gets it back, shoots. This time doesn't go. Brassfield the rebound. And Indiana Tech going to shoot again. Connor West this time. He puts himself in the point column. Just his second shot of the game. And this one's good. West a facilitator more than anything. And Cornerstone, a three ball of their own. And that is Gortmaker who hits out of bounds in the final 53.7 seconds. Indiana Tech to four and one in the conference. Will be five and five overall. West the rebound, and we'll have to take one more shot here for Indiana Tech. Looking for a freshman, Hobson doesn't get the reverse lay-in. Other side, missed the lay-in for Cornerstone. And Indiana Tech can walk the rest of this game out. Fans rise to their feet. A great performance from Indiana Tech on the home floor today. 87-61, the final score. Indiana Tech defeats Cornerstone Warriors. Now 4-1 in the conference and back to 500 on the season. Scoring totals for Tech. 
14 for Gibson and Perez to lead the way. Titus with 13. Lewis and Roberts each score 10. 50 points in that first half as Indiana Tech gets back to 500 with a big win over Cornerstone. We will talk to you just before the new year with Tech women's basketball against Indiana Wesleyan. On the men's side of things, we'll see you back here at the Schaefer Center on January 6th. 87-61, Warriors victorious over Cornerstone on the home floor today. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior.